Determine the general solution of the following, and it's for seven marks. Okay, so when I look at this, um, it's quite interesting to try to think about what we need to do. But just, uh, you know, I was, I was looking at it and I'm thinking, hmm, what could work? But then I realized, I'm just quickly writing down the question. Then I realized, um, let's try this. Okay, I'm not saying it's gonna work, but it might work. So if we take out a common factor on this side, that would be sin. That would be your common factor. What would you be left with? Cos x plus one. Then on this side, you can take out a common factor of three cos x. What would you be left with? Cos x plus one. Now, listen carefully, please. Um, a lot of learners, what you guys do is you would try to cancel these two because you would see that they're the same. That is not allowed, okay? It's like maybe you've watched some of our videos where I've said that a lot of learners, when they get a question like this, they just wanna cancel these Xs. But if you know the right way to do, what is the right way to do it? The right way is to take everything to the one side and then factorize, okay? So you're gonna do the same approach here. We're gonna take everything to the one side and then we are going to factorize. So the reason we can factorize is that we've got this term and this term, which is common. And so we're gonna take out a cos x plus one, and then we'd be left with sin x take away three cos x. Okay, now just in normal mathematics where you have like a bracket of x minus one, x plus three equals to zero, what would you do at this time? No, you wouldn't multiply the brackets out. You would rather say that x minus one is zero or x plus three is zero. And we're gonna do the exact same over here. And so I'm gonna say cos x plus one equals zero. And then I'm gonna say sin x minus three cos x equals zero. So for this one, you're just gonna go take the negative one to the other side. There we go. And then for this one, you see we have a sin and a cos, and the angles are the same. That's gonna be a tan. So the way you get a tan is you take this three cos x over to the other side. Okay, now, if you've watched any of my videos on solving general solutions, you would have come across some types of lessons where I tell you um, what I suggest you do whenever you end up with a one, a zero, or a minus one. Can you remember? Well, well done if you can remember that. I don't suggest you do the normal um, reference angle quadrant method. You can if you want to, but there's a better way, a faster way. And that is to just quickly draw a sketch graph. So this is a cos graph, which always starts up here at one, and then it does this. So where is a cos graph equal to negative one? Well, that would be over here. Now, if you know your cos graph, you would know that this is 90 degrees and this is 180. Okay, and then this is 270 and that's 360. So this would be 180. Now, where would that repeat? Well, the graph would continue to go like this. So this would be um, 360, I'm just gonna put it over there instead, that's 360. Another 90 would be 450, so that would be 450. And then another 90 would be 540. So what is the horizontal distance between that? Well, if you go from 180 to 540, how much is that? Well, that's 360. And then if the graph had to continue, it would keep repeating every 360 degrees. So what we can say is that cos is equal to negative one. So you say, whenever the angle is 180 degrees or any multiple of 360. So any multiple of 360 degrees, and then you can just say K is an element of Z. So that means that the first answer is 180. And then if you want more um, answers, you can just plug in different numbers for K, like one, negative one. If you say negative one, it would go that way. Um, if you say negative two, it would go that way as well. If you say positive one, it would go to there. If you say positive two, it would go to there. If you say positive three, it would go to there. So that is literally the answer for this one. You don't need to do any quadrants. You don't need to do any reference angles. The graph takes care of that for us. And I recommend you use the graph method whenever you have a one, minus one or a zero over here. Okay, so with this one, we said that we're gonna get tan. So to get tan, you divide both sides by cos. And so this would be, um, if you divide by cos, and you divide by cos, then you end up with tan over here, 
It's only a tan because these two angles are the same. If those angles are different, then you cannot use the tan um, method. Then here your cos's will cancel out since you end up with a three. Now you have to go to your reference angle. So this is where you'll say shift on a Casio calculator, tan of three, and if you enter that, you're gonna get 71.57 degrees, 71. Point five seven degrees. So that's your reference angle. Now remember tan is positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. But remember that with tan it is nice because you only have to use one of those quadrants. If you forget about that and you use both quadrants they will never ever penalize you because it's not wrong. It just takes a bit of extra time um, okay, that's all. So I'm going to quickly carry on over here. So I'm going to choose quadrant one. Why? Quadrant one is just so nice to work with. So in quadrant one, you don't say 180 minus, 180 plus, 360 minus. You literally just go straight to the reference angle, which is 71.57 plus. Now remember with tan, we don't say K360, we say K180. And then we can say um, K is an element of Z. And that is literally your answers, guys, up to there.